Well, good evening. That's quite an introduction. Thank you. Oh, it is a joy to be here in Cambodia. My family and I, we moved here in February. We came from Bangkok. Before that, we lived in Seoul. Before that, Okinawa, Japan. Before that, a whole bunch of other places. There was one year my wife was uh, not so happy about. Because we lived in four different cities in 12 months. It's an interesting ministry when you have a ministry as an itinerant. That means you, you go where the schedule takes you. Now, to be honest, it's not my schedule. It's Franklin Graham's schedule. But I have been honored to work with him since 2006. And he preaches the simple gospel. And that's what he's going to do here. The churches in Phnom Penh have invited Franklin Graham to come and to partner together with them for an outreach that the churches are holding. And you may wonder, why do you move around and stay a place for one year when it's only two days? And it's really because the festival is more than just two days. When the church here does an outreach, you don't just have an outreach. Right, you may not realize it, but your leadership, they're discipling you and they're teaching you and they're getting you ready to preach the gospel. That's what the Bible teaches us to do. We are to grow in our faith and in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then our great commission is to go and make disciples. So whenever we have an outreach, we're preaching the gospel. But first we get ready to preach. And we also prepare to be ready to do discipleship with new believers. This is a basic model of outreach in any church. The only difference between that and what we do with the festival, the Love Phnom Penh Festival, is we're doing it on a citywide scale. We're asking lots of churches to do the same thing. But the outreach is together. Because we all serve one God. And we all worship Christ alone. Well, we're going to show you a quick little promo video. That you can see to see what is the festival and who's going to be there. It's going to be real quick, so don't miss it. Go ahead, guys. Did you miss it? Yes, we did. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you guys saw that your very own life band is going to be there. But see, the, the festival is not about all these artists. The, fest the festival is all about Jesus Christ. When you leave today, there's some uh, tickets or invitations that you can get to invite your friends and bring them to the festival. And we want to encourage you, since you won't be here that night, to go and bring all your friends to hear the gospel. 
going to get into the word. And this time of year is what we call in the church, we call it the Advent season. And it's really the, the revealing of Jesus Christ. And today is the first day of Advent. And today we're going to talk about the Christmas story. And so, and so we're going to go ahead and read in Kamai. You ready for that? Verses, or excuse me, Luke chapter 2. Verses two, 8 through 20. Bye. ក្នុងស្រុកនោះពេលយប់មានពួកកង្វាលនៅមើលហ្វុងសត្វរបស់គេតាមវាលស្មោកពេលនោះទេវតារបស់ព្រះអមចាស់មកឈរនៅក្ប
Christmas is not about Santa Claus or presents. Christmas is about Jesus Christ. Now he is the greatest present of all. And this story that we read from Luke chapter 2 is about the first Christmas. But what makes this baby so special? I mean, millions or thousands, multitudes of heavenly hosts came to declare his birth. But babies are born every day. My daughter was born on New Year's Day. The night before, New Year's Eve, we were at church and we were having a fellowship. My wife was having some labor pains, but not a lot. But as we sat down to eat dinner, we got right back up and went to the hospital because she was going into full labor. And a few hours later, I was a new daddy. Now, there weren't angels singing in the heavens. I was, I was very happy. I was rejoicing in my heart. And our friends from church, they were rejoicing along with us. But see, there's a difference between when my daughter was born and when Jesus was born. See, Jesus is no ordinary baby. These angels were sent to declare a message that he had been born. They told the shepherds, do not be afraid. For behold, we, I bring good tidings of great joy. Which will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Who is Christ the Lord? The heavenly hosts, they sang glory to God in the highest. And peace on earth. Good will toward men. You see, this baby was born a savior. But why is that such a big deal? Why do we need a savior? Well, to answer that question, we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the world. If I were to take this iPhone apart and take all the pieces of it, throw them up in the air. What are the chances that they will come down, hit the ground, bounce back together, and become a perfectly working iPhone? Is that possible? No. It's not going to happen. The same thing with the world. Just like somebody created and built this iPhone, somebody created the world. And the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. He created the oceans. All the land. The plants and the animals. And his final creation was mankind. He created you and me. And he created all this and the world was perfect. In Genesis 1.31 he says it was very good. But you know, when we look around, we don't see a good world. 
see war and famine. We see violence and destruction. We, we see people stealing and cheating. There's hurt and pain. We see fear everywhere. We don't see good, we see a lot of evil. We see death. So what happened to this good world that God created? Well, something happened. And something's missing. You see, God created you and me to have a loving relationship with Him. And in this relationship, he desired for us to have full life. He wanted us to enjoy every moment of every day in his goodness and love. But you see, God didn't create us to be robots. A robot gets programmed to do certain things. If you program a robot and it moves its arm, it's because it was programmed to move its arm. But God didn't create us to just do whatever he tells us to do. You can't program love. If we were programmed to love, it wouldn't be love. Love is a voluntary action. I have to decide to love somebody. And that's a gift that God gave each and every one of us. The gift to decide. We call it free will. The freedom to choose to either love God and obey Him. Or to love myself. And disobey God. In the very beginning, God created a man, and his name was Adam. And God told Adam, you can eat from any tree in the garden. Except for the one in the middle. Don't eat from that one. Anytime your parents tell you, don't do something, what happens? I have a son, he's seven. I say, hey son, don't touch that. You're going to get hurt. That? Yeah, don't touch that. Right? We do exactly what our parents tell us not to do. Because we think we're smarter. Adam took from that tree in the middle of the garden. Adam he did what God told him not to do. And sin entered the world. And it's this sin that is our problem. But God made a promise. He made a covenant. And the first mention of a redeemer, of a savior, is right after Adam sinned. This willful disobedience that we do against our Creator is called sin. And the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right, that's why the shepherds were so afraid. When the glory of God was shining around them, they fell short. And they were afraid. God's glory was shining around them. And you see, God is righteous and God is holy. 
There's no sin in God. And sin cannot exist around God. Because of our sin, we have been separated from a relationship that God created us to have. There's an emptiness in our heart. Way down deep in our soul. And perhaps you've tried to fill that emptiness. Perhaps you've tried to build a bridge to get back to that relationship with God. This can be a bridge of good works. Bridge of morality. It could be a bridge of philosophy. This can even be a bridge of religion. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12 that there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. There's no bridge that reaches to God except for one. And that bridge is Jesus Christ. This baby that the angels declared to the shepherds, he didn't stay a baby. The angels declared that he was a savior. Not just any savior. The savior. The savior promised from the beginning of the world. And this baby grew into a man. His name is Jesus. And faith in Jesus is the only way to fill that emptiness in your soul. Jesus Christ is the only way back to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. When you get a job, you earn wages for your work. Sometimes we call it a salary. You do some work, you get paid. Right? But you can also get paid or earn a penalty. Right? If, if I break the law, I earn a penalty. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And because of our sin, we all have sinned, right? But because of our sin, we've all earned death. But that very same verse continues and says, but God, excuse me, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a gift because of Jesus. God demonstrated his own love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loves you. That's what Christmas is all about. How much God loves you. For God so loved the world. He gave his one and only son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish. But will have everlasting life. These angels over 2,000 years ago, what they declared is true for you and me today. For there is born to you 
this day in the city of David a Savior. Who is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace. Good will toward men. Because of sin, there's a spiritual war between the Creator God and all who have rebelled against Him as their authority. But the angels here are singing of peace. They're, they're singing of God's good will towards you. And towards me. Again, for God so loved the world. That he gave his one and only son. That who should ever believe in him shall not perish. But this baby grew into a man. And, and as a man, he showed us what a relationship with God was meant to look like. And no hunger. No pain. No fear. No death. God created you to have a relationship with him. You were created to have life to the full. But sin has separated us from God. The penalty for sin is death. And Jesus took that penalty for you. He took the penalty for your sin and died the death you deserve. The death I deserved. And in this passage of scripture, we read of the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect life without sin. And because he never sinned, he never earned death. And ដោយសារតែអំពើបាប់របស់លោកកៃមានជីសឹសដៃដល់ក្រោសនៅពេលដែលព្រះអង្គសកុតនៅលើឈើឆ្កាងទីសិកដីស្លាប់ដែលជា
Everything needed to give you forgiveness of sin. Everything needed to give you forgiveness of sin. And he offers it to you as a gift. It doesn't cost you anything. He offers us a choice. A choice to repent. And accept his forgiveness. We accept his forgiveness by trusting in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And receiving him as our Lord. The, the one we will follow. And also as our Savior. The only one who can rescue us from our sin. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart. That God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You can put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today. You can be forgiven of all your guilt and shame today. And in a moment, I'm going to invite you to come up and do that. Many of you here tonight have already put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And just like the shepherds, you've heard the gospel. My encouragement to you tonight is to look at their response. They heard the good news of great joy. And they didn't just sit there and go, that's nice. They responded. They immediately went to Bethlehem to see these things. And they didn't go with this, oh, let's go see if it's true kind of thinking. They went with the declaration of let's go th see these things that have been told to us. They believed. And if you have believed in Jesus Christ, what are you going to do about it? The, these shepherds, they went. They saw the babe. And Joseph and Mary. Right after that, they didn't go back in the fields and go, that was cool. No, they, they told everybody. They told everybody what they had heard and what they had seen. And if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your life, have you told people what you have heard and seen? Or are you sitting and enjoying the comfortable seat at church? Are you surrendered to the Lord and allowing Him to use your life to reach out to show the love of God to those around you? God didn't just save you to make you safe. He saved you so you could be a messenger to those around you. You can say a Savior is born. Peace on earth. Earth. God's goodwill towards all. Jesus Christ came to save each and every one of us from our sins. If you have never made a commitment or never 
Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of all your sins. As the team comes back up, I want to invite you to do that right now. I want to invite you to listen to the still small voice that's telling you that today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow. None of us are promised tomorrow. You, know, you may get on your moto and go home and never make it. I might not make it. That's why the Bible tells us today. Choose this day who you will serve. Are you going to serve yourself? And have that loneliness and the emptiness in your heart? Or will you hear the call of Jesus saying, Come. Give me the sin. Give me, give me all these things that are holding you back. Surrender your life. So you can have it to the full. Jesus Christ paid everything when he put his body on the cross for your sin. And he's offering you forgiveness for free. If you want that freedom from sin, or if you have never surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to come forward. There's going to be some leaders up here who can meet with you. But right now, I want to ask you to come. Come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. I promise you it'll never be the same. You come right now. And you come right now. If you've been living on the, the edge of Christianity, one foot in the world, or maybe one foot in the church, that's one of the most miserable places to be. If that's you, and you want to make a decision for Christ today, that from this day forward, you will follow him as Lord and Savior. You come. Come. Come and let Jesus lead your life. How do we receive Christ? Well, we have to first be willing to admit that we are sinners. It's a hard thing sometimes to be able to admit that I need something from somebody else. But that's what Christ asks us to do. Admit your need. And then be willing to repent and turn from your sin. If that's you, I invite you to come forward right now. This time we're going to pray. We'll close out. Amen. It's not too late if you want to come. Jesus is calling. 
He's calling to welcome you home. If you're coming forward to accept Christ, I want to ask that you pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and I want to turn from my sin. And I now invite you to come and to live in my heart and in my life. I want to trust you as Savior and follow you as Lord. Amen. 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 ប្រសិនបើអនុបងប្អូនមួយចំនួនតែចូលរួមជាមួយក្រុមជំនុំជីវិតថ្មីមរិយាហើយប៉ុណ្ណោះអត់ដែលមានឱកាសថ្វាយ